Can open this up. Okay. Well, I just thank you for the day and thank you for the class. Just ask you, oh, you to be able to no, no. Just share the information that you want okay. and, and yeah. that it's effective by the end of the day. We all know we're asking you to do it for the scriptures and then for it. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, well, I'm talking to God. We're on page 18. <laughs> Where? 18, the first section. First section. There you go. Okay. This is kind of an overview of the uh, what um, feast and festivals we have during what particular time. It kind of coincides the uh, the two calendars. You know the uh, the one we use, uh, the solar calendar, and then the Jewish lunar calendar, and about when the uh, they all uh, observe these different uh, feast and festivals. And it's not exact because it can't be exact because in the Jewish calendar, if you remember right, every periodically the end of extra months, you know. So, and with our calendar, we had an extra day uh, every four years. So, okay. Um, but is there any questions about this? I don't want to get into it too much because it's just pretty self explanatory if you want to, you know, approximately what time of year is such and such. So, <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, I have a question. Then. Is that like blue guy on this side? Blah, blah, blah. Right? As it goes around, are those like the signs of the zodiac? Right? No, they're not zodiac. No, they don't use zodiac mm -hmm. signs. No. Uh, uh, I mean, you got like March, you've got Adar up there. That's a Jewish. Uh, that's the Jewish name of a Jewish month. Okay. Yeah. And when they add an extra month, they add an extra Adar. So you've got Adar one and Adar two. Or one, a uh, one slash two. That's why. The, that's why these things are not exact. There. I mean, because they do vary. Now those are all. Those are all the names of the different months on the Jewish calendar. Now, they're not the names that God named because God named, you know, God said the first month or the second month or the third month. He just used a number. But these are the different ones that uh, in the Jewish calendar. Yeah. On the next page, page 19, I think we've pretty much gone over all of this, the different months. Um, we've gone into the calendars. I don't want to get into it too much again if we haven't if, if there's any questions about the calendars we'll do it now but uh, I know the the calendars and trying to figure them out it may be a little bit uh, difficult it's a little confusing but unfortunately that's the way that's the way it is it is kind of confusing sometimes and then on page 20 uh down towards the last half of it, uh, it talks about the Talmud, mm -hmm. which is the oral law. Okay. And the oral law is uh, covers the uh, Talmud and the Mishnah. Yeah, I don't know what the Mishnah is the uh, uh, written suggestions by the rabbis. Uh, Okay. The oral law is a legal commentary on the Torah. It explains how to do some different things. Which isn't bad in itself because they had to have some kind of oral law. But when it, and the, that won't uh, nullify uh, the Torah. I have a question. Is it just religious law or is it 
speed limit and stop signs too? Or? Um, when it says it would have to do with stop signs too, type of thing. I mean, not that when we drive we see a stop sign, and it doesn't mean to like that. But uh, for instance, how to observe um, Passover? Mm -hmm. Okay, Passover in, in in the oral in the written law is just you are to observe it. it you know, it's not a high holiday. But it is uh, you are to have a Passover meal, and remember what you've done and what you know came out of uh, Egypt. Okay, now the uh, the Talmud will go a bit deeper into it. Exactly how to have the uh, unleavened bread, how to a little bit more exactly on how to uh, what you're supposed to say and what you're supposed to do, and the different drinks and things like this that you're going to go through, the different ways you're doing it. And the Mishnah would be extra stuff that the rabbis keep adding in so that, uh, you know, it just compounds the whole thing more and more, makes it more difficult. And that's the part that Jesus, Yeshua, had to have a problem with when you start getting into all the stuff that the rabbis add in there because it added into the point that it, it nullified the Torah. Yeah. Some of the re religious things. I mean, Jesus even mentioned it, you know, about when a person dies, you know, what the stuff they're supposed to give to the kids. But no, the rabbis say, no, you don't give it to the kids, you give it to the temple. <laughs> of course. Yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah. And that's kind of how the Catholics like think. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that how the Catholics <laughs> think? That's oh. why they don't want the priest to get married. Uh, when the priest dies, they give it back to the church. <laughs> That's what I thought. <laughs> That's why they're not allowed to be married. <laughs> well, they're supposed to keep their focus on God, you know. I know, but but then you know, uh, I don't want I don't want to get into that. I don't want to get into that. Mess. Just, just say that's another class. Yeah, <laughs> that's another class. <laughs> I have a question. I'm going to have to answer that question because I'm seeing some of these YouTube videos right now. And Jesus said, I have come to fulfill the law. Mm -hmm. Is it this one or which law is it? The law is um, what, what, this law. What Jesus meant. What did Jesus mean? Okay. When he said that? Well, first of all, he, he fulfilled the law of who he is to be. It who is the sorry. who is the Mashiach? Who is the who who he is? He fulfilled the law because the law, the law had a bunch. I mean, in, in Torah, there was a bunch of laws about who the, who the, who the, uh, who Jesus was supposed to be. Um, so he fulfilled that law. He also fulfilled the law of you know sin and death to the point that you his blood. And he didn't fulfill it until after he died and rose again. He fulfilled the law as far as, as uh, of, you know, if you if you killed somebody, you or I shouldn't say kill somebody, exactly. if you stole something or lied about something, okay, then before Yeshua, before he died, you were guilty and you would die forever. He fulfilled that curse. He fulfilled the curse of the law. The curse was the fact that if you that you had no way of, of, of cleansing yourself. And isn't that why they made so many lamb sacrifices? That was part of the, the cleansing process. Of yeah. The law. Oh yeah. So he fulfilled that cleansing process because he was the sacrificial lamb. He was the sacrificial lamb. Now back in Yeshua's time. When they did the sacrifices, they had only covered the sins. Only Yeshua, when he died, his blood erases and washes away our sins. Well, he didn't do away with the laws. We still have but to follow the law. Doesn't, it doesn't mean that he fulfilled all the 613 commandments plus the ones. Right. Mm -hmm. Rabbis, but it, it's not meant like this. Right. right. 
well, I hate to say a 613 because he because he couldn't keep all of them either. Because I, I, I printed out a copy of it, but I don't want to get into it. I'll, after class, I'll, if you want to see what the 613 uh, laws are, I'll show them to you. Right. He didn't fulfill them to do away with them. Okay. Stealing is still stealing. Lying is still lying. Having another God is still having another God. But the thing is, is that he did away with the curse of the law, which meant you have no you have no forgiveness. You have you will you are going to die and be dead forever. Go to hell. But now, because of Jesus dying and shedding his blood, those sins are done away with. Because what they they argued, they said, well, Jesus himself, he said. I fulfilled the law, so we don't fulfill his law. So that's all right. You don't need to do this after Messiah. Yeah, that's that, that was their argumentation. Then that time. Yeah, that's why I hate to even get into that. I hate to people say that you know that he did away with the law because people take it differently. People take it they feel okay. I can do what I want because Jesus fulfilled it, and no matter what I do, if I steal, I lie, and everything else, I'm still going to heaven. Yeah. No. That's kind of like one side always say. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's why I hate people even to say that, you know, that Jesus did away with the laws. Well, no, he didn't do away with the laws. Sin is still sin. But he did away with the curse of the law. And then the law itself said, you know, to be the Mashiach, to be the Messiah, you had to do certain things. Born in in uh, Bethlehem, you had to, um, I forget what all they were, but I mean, he fulfilled a bunch of them. I know of who the Messiah is. Does that clarify it better? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, or maybe Jews, they are taught. The argumentation is see, even Jesus says fulfilled the law, the law our law. Yes, I know, I know. It it I know people you people use it, they take it out of context. Because if you keep reading, he said, I not doing away with one dot or tittle of the word of the law. So read the whole thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't take anything out of context. Maybe that explains it a little better. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Well, I just wanted to get into this. You know what the Torah, the uh, Talmud was, and the Mishnah. There are other teachings by the rabbis, um, and they hold some of them hold, like I said, uh, the Mishnah and the, the rabbis. They hold that to a higher level than than the Torah, and that's not correct. That's what Jesus had came against when he argued with the Sadducees and Pharisees. Okay. Now, if you go over to the next page on page 21, I think we've mentioned this before, but this first part, I mean, a pay for slay policy. Oh, and the, and the Muslims, the Palestinians, they get paid or the family gets paid if the son kills a Jew, they get rewarded. The family does. By the government, the Palestinian government. And unfortunately, the United States government puts money in their coffers that goes to these things. So in other words, we're paying to a certain extent for the pan slay of things. But they honor the honor the guys that you know that have done all these bad things to Jews, and they get honored. And, and of course, they got when they go to their heaven. I mean, they get seventy two virgins too each. You know, so that's. Yeah, yeah. But he didn't say what age. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're supposed to be beautiful. Thank you. 
I would, I would hope that God make him make him a homosexual. The pain of mine was like 17 nuns. Does Islam have the equivalent of nuns? I don't know. I mean, it's, it's in the Muslim, I mean, the women are, are nothing but baby factories. That's what they are. I mean, they're, they're second rate citizens. I mean, and it doesn't make any sense to what's going on right now. And the, and the women are going right along with it. And they're, they're doing all this yeah. stuff too, encouraging. They are brainwashed. They are totally brainwashed. Oh, they are. And they are being yeah. yeah. They were showing these young girls in their halter tops and short shorts at the protest. If they took over, they'd be beaten with sticks. Sure. They'd be yeah. the and stuff like that. Yeah. No. Oh, yeah. They, they yeah. you know. And homosexuals, they're doing it too, you know, and they would kill them. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They would kill them. You know, it just, well, like we all know, it's not, it's not them so much. It's, it's, it's a, it's a battle between God and Satan. I mean, that's what it's right down to. But I did want to mention this pay for slay because it is something that's, that's going on. It's been there for a long time, unfortunately. And some of our tax dollars go over there for that purpose. It's still going on. No, I can assume that it's not earmarked. Hi, I'm America. Here's some money for your paper plate. Oh, no, no, no. Exactly. It's going into this fund, and that's what they use. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's a shuttle game. You know, yeah. they they give it for they give it for the food. Well, the original food money is given for this, and then you know it's it, it's a shuttle game. You and my you're going to the war in Africa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, but you know, we've been giving money to them for a long time. I mean, Arafat was a, was a billionaire. You know. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, the people lived poor, but he he lived, you know, in, in luxury. Can you read that somewhere? You know? What that paper slay? Oh yeah. Because it's their last modified December. Yep. Yeah. Do they say how much they get for that picture? Well, it depends on whether they were killed or, or Aaron injured and how many got killed and, mm -hmm. you know. Say approximately per person? Huh? $100 or? I have no idea what it is. Thousand. Yeah, it gets into the thousands, you know. And, um, well, I mean, it's so much money per month they get, you know, yeah. or something like that. But, and I didn't want to get into that. I don't. I didn't look that up to see what they get. I mean, they're going to get tons now. <laughs> no, <laughs> governments like this is going to keep paying more money into it. Unfortunately, unless we get a change of government. Yeah. Huh? It's been irritating of us. Oh yeah. 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 But in our city, they don't ask for off commission. No, no, it's not money, but they're not asking for off commission. Yes, yeah, yeah. Um, Islam down there, I'm trying to you know, get through some of this. Uh, they they pray for, towards Mecca, they have their backs to Jerusalem. The uh, in, in their in their Quran, Jer Jerusalem isn't even mentioned. Um, and you got to remember, Islam, like Christianity, came out of Judaism. Can I just ask, when you said Jerusalem's not mentioned, how do they refer to where the dome on the rock is? Just uh, the, the temple on the dome on the rock. Okay. Temple. And the city mentioned very high. Okay. You know. Mm -hmm. uh, their Muslim uh, food laws are the same as the Jewish food laws. In other words, if I go out to a restaurant and it said, you know, okay for, for Muslims, kosher for Muslims, that would be kosher for Jews too. It is interesting, isn't it, that they have the same food laws? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Kind of yeah. Interesting. Thing. Is, is it confusing, contradictory when I hear kosher for Muslims? I would assume kosher as being a Jewish term. but I, I, It is a Jewish term. I would think kosher for Muslims would be would indicate 
more that um, Muslims' hands have been on the food. Where kosher for Jews, Jewish hands have done the food. Because that makes a big difference in the Jew in, in in the Jewish one I know. What is it? Kosher and Jewish hands made the food. Kosher just means it's 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 made according to um, Torah, or kosher means uh, kosher to the uh, uh, Islam to the Quran. But, but isn't that dealing with how they prepare the food and how they prepare the food? How they prepare the food and the type of food, too. I mean, you, yeah, yeah, well, yeah, well, yeah, that's what be kosher for uh, uh, Jews or kosher for Islam. Who prepares it? But I mean, the kosher has to do with how they drain the blood out of the out of the animals. The type of animals, I mean, they don't, they wouldn't have any pigs, right. you know. So um, it's how they drain the blood out, um, how they kill the animal, you know, that type of thing. Oh, yeah, pigs are mentioned as a curse. Yeah. <laughs> I know a girl and her husband, she has tiny pigs. Mm -hmm. but tiny pigs mini, the miniature pigs. pigs. Huh? Well, they, they have those. Oh, they tiny, okay. yeah. 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 Then they have those pot bellied pig, pigs that, you know, in your home and everything like uh, that. And, you know, no. Nah. <laughs> yeah, that would that would be a curse. I mean, you know, so no. Um, prohibiting of images and idols. They also have separation of men and women in worship, which is very true. When you when you see anything of either a, a Jewish uh, Orthodox uh, temple or something like that, all the men are on one side and all the women are on another side. Uh, even at the Western Wall, you've got one section for men and another section for women. They are the same way, Muslims. They have a section for men and they have a section for women. Because you can't lust after a woman. That's, that's for the men's sake. I mean, when I was, when I was, in, when I was in temple, I mean, you know, they have, they have curtains around behind you. You see a lot of the women, you know, looking over the curtains at the men, you know, but <laughs> we all looked alike. I mean, we're all in, I wasn't quite so much like the rest of them, but I, you know, they all wear black and white, and from the back, you can't tell who's who. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, you look anyway, right? Oh, yeah. You're going to try to figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> the more you separate men from women, the more they look. Well, you don't see the men looking at the women, trying to look at the women so much. It's the women looking at because they were behind or over at the side, and the men are pretty well concentrated on looking to the front uh, to the Torah and session things like that. So, I mean, they may glance over. I mean, I was there. I didn't see Benny doing it, but you know, we did a lot of side eyes. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and little kids were permitted in both. As soon as a girl reached, I think it was twelve, eleven or twelve, when possibly she would get her her period, mm -hmm. then she could no longer be with her father on the father's side. She had to stay with the mother on the mother's women's side. And that would seem so embarrassing in our culture that everyone But that's the way they are, and you know. Some of the rules and regulations don't make sense, but you know, that's okay. Um, I'm not sure about that. That's I think it's bound down. But they, they do, they get on their rugs and they lay and they and they prostrate, you know. Not prostate. Just an R, one letter. 
Um, paradise is described as a garden-like environment in both. Um, rabbinical teachings mentioned in the Quran. Um, and Jesus is accepted as a prophet um, and, uh, and and as a messiah in the uh, um, in the Jew in, in the Islam in the Quran the Quran uh, they think Jesus is going to come back with the Muhammad or Muhammad, yeah, Muhammad yeah and he will he will he will he will, he will tell everybody that you know he was wrong. That he wasn't, he wasn't, he didn't raise again from the dead, and he didn't, you know, he wasn't the Messiah, and he's going to confess all that, and, you know, the Muhammad or Muhammad or whatever they call him. Uh, he's the true, the true, you know, person. So, uh, their holy war is a, a faith. Uh, it's against against Jews, but once they get done with the Jews, they would come to the Christians too. Yeah. And they're trying to hasten that right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because they, they they will kill anybody eventually. They want to kill everybody that doesn't believe exactly the way they believe. So you've got to be, you know, if you weren't if you weren't a, a Muslim, and I'm not sure whether it's Shiite or uh, which, I mean, but I, I don't think so that the Muslims believe that Jesus is the Messiah. Yeah. Isn't that well, Messiah, he's only a prophet, he's only a prophet, mm -hmm. yeah, but not you said here, and and as the Messiah, well, they, as a Messiah, but he 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 will say he was wrong as the Messiah, but this is not, yeah, it's not true, not as the savior of the world. Of the no, world. so what's the Messiah? Isn't there a Messiah? Okay, well, the, you know, even the Jews, I mean, they, they think there's going to be two Messiahs, okay. Mashiach ben David and Mashiach ben Joseph. Now, ben Joseph was a suffering servant. Well, Jesus fulfilled that when he came the first time. And Mashiach ben, ben David, he's going to be the conquering uh, when he comes back this next time. But the Jews, you know, they don't realize he came the first time, so they're still looking for the first time, and they don't really care about Mashiach ben Joseph, the suffering servant. They want Mashiach ben David to conquer and to take control of the world. Anointed one, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. But is, uh, do I think uh, Muhammad is also an anointed one? one? Yeah. A messiah? But he is the messiah. He is the anointed one. Yes. the world. Thank God. Mm -hmm. I think the problem is that a lot of times they use the same word, but you have to know what meaning that word has for them. Yeah. Because that makes a big difference. Mm -hmm. When I say Jesus, I, I think of him as my Lord and Savior. Mm -hmm. Someone else might find think he was just a nice guy. Yeah. You know, oh, yeah. it's a big difference. Mm hmm. Uh, yeah, Muhammad declares himself to be a prophet of God. That's on page 22, by the way. Um, anybody that makes war against Allah and his apostles will be put to death or crucified or have their hands or feet cut off and all from their sides. You know, and Believers that stay at home are not equal to those that fight against the cause of Allah. It's pretty explanatory. Right? Martin Luther, which we I know in our in our stuff, we hear a lot about Martin Luther, but uh, in his Reformation, but he was anti-Semitic. He burned synagogues, destroyed their homes, did away with uh, with uh, Jewish prayer books and rabbinical writings. He forbid rabbis to teach. He took away their passports and traveling privileges. Put them to hard labor. So 
Which year was that? Huh? Uh, which year was that? Or which century? Um, yeah, 1500s. It was about 1500s, I think. On page 23, it gives you how Muslims and Jews and Christians all um, view the last days. Okay. Why did Martin Luther do um, Why did he do that? Because he well, he was anti-Semitic. I think he was a little crazy. He was. Well, he might say, why was he the one who changed the Latin um, speaking into uh, the German speaking? German language because the sermons before in the churches were embedded so nobody could understand. Mm -hmm. And didn't you separate the Catholics? I think he did the, the, the Catholics, he took them out and, and did a lot with um, making more of a Protestant. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> Yeah, I tell you the truth, I really haven't done that much talking. I mean, reading about him, I just know that he wasn't good. <laughs> well, I could make a point to give some of your friends that I would use it to address that he felt that the Jews had killed Jesus. Yeah. yeah. So it's probably the, you know, blaming the Jews. Right. And therefore, we must. Yeah, it. and then he, he thought the church did, a, I mean, took the place of Israel. That's the big thing. In fact, a lot of churches nowadays still believe that same thing, that uh, the church did away, uh, the church took the place of Israel. As far as the promises and everything else goes. And their theology, I mean, had a little bit of background up until 1948 when Israel became a nation again. Then that put that all to, to pieces. I think they get part of that from the time when Saul turned to Paul mm -hmm. and uh, his ministry was to Gentile. And I think that when Paul actually said, Gentiles will eventually be ministering to the Jews about their Messiah. Mm -hmm. uh, I got a feeling that's where he got some of that idea that maybe it took the place mm -hmm. in the synagogue. Mm -hmm. So that's clearly in the scripture. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm with your questions. How old are, are the virgin? Beautiful virgin. Well, I thought that was all the eyes of beholder. <laughs> <laughs> and I've always heard that they're, you know, got black eyes. So I don't know why, but apparently they think that's beautiful or something. Black eyed virgins, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. It's feminist. I mean, it puts down women so much. Mm -hmm. It puts down women. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's just. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I paid 25 of them for a red one. <laughs> <laughs> Not to find it in the Middle East. <laughs> Somebody says, so what is then the following day? So when. They have the virgins to buy the next one. I mean, look at Solomon. Look how many women Solomon had. You know? Yeah, what is the significance of that number? That's that's what I was going to point out. I don't know. Okay, like I said, on page 23, I'm not going to go through it. You can read it. Uh, it talks about what the difference of I'm going to read that was. Um, yeah, now page 24. Um, this is what actually should have should be the size of Israel. Mm -hmm. This is the what God gave them in Genesis uh 12 1. Okay, what, what are you saying? The, the shaded, yes, uh huh. The shaded there it says greater Israel. 
Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, that's what in Genesis, when Genesis uh, 12, 1, when God laid out to um, Abraham, this is this is the uh, this is the dimensions. Now Israel will finally, I think, during the millennium, take control of all that area. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do the Jews know that? Huh? Do they know that? <laughs> no, because read it. Well, the Jews would, because it's in the Bible. It's in the it's in the Tanakh. Well, they just want to hang on. They just want to survive as a country as a country right now. They're not trying to expand themselves. They just want to, you know, stay a a, a country and um, live in peace. What you're looking for? Where is Israel right now? Oh, not now. Oh. <laughs> yep. In Syria and Lebanon. Right, be, right below the AE in Israel. Mm -hmm. Or, the, I mean, the LE, rather. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. like a triangle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. That's Israel right now. Of course, you take part of that out because you've got. Uh, You've got Gaza in there, and you've got the West Bank, which isn't controlled by Israel completely. So, well, they tried to take that in now. That would cause Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, look what Syria and Lebanon are doing right now. Yeah. I mean, I get hourly updates practically from over there, and uh, they're getting hit real hard from Syria and Lebanon right now. It's going. To, it's going. You know, and we've lost. We've lost some Americans too. Mm -hmm. Uh, Houthis, are they, they're on the south end of Israel. The yeah, sea? they're way down on the Red Sea, down way at the bottom, um, and they're shooting. They're shooting up towards Israel, uh, and they get that little tip uh, that I forget. Um, it's a resort um, in Israel. The Houthis are they in Egypt? Is that where they're escaping out of? Or no, uh, not Egypt. They're in. Uh, one little country. Yeah, one little country right there in the uh, Yemen or not Yemen and Qatar. Qatar. It, it down in if I had a bigger map I could show you exactly where they are, but I you know, but uh they're at the bottom of the Red Sea on the right hand side. <laughs> <laughs> the right side of the page. <laughs> yeah, if you go down the Red Sea and you're on the right hand side at the very bottom. <laughs> And they're and they're the ones that shooting these rockets up towards Israel to. Uh, they must have the long range rockets then. If they got that's quite a ways. Yeah, well, I mean, Iran is supplying them. I know. Yeah, Iran's supplying them. Iran's Iran. They're supplying all these people. Mm -hmm. This is interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the Muslims first kill the Jews and then the Christians. Yeah. They've already said that, too. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I'm going to mention a couple of things now. Um, and speaking of Jews, there is uh, two divisions, basically, out in the uh, Ashkenazi Jews and then the Sephardic Jews. You might hear these terminologies. All they mean is it's not in, in your book. Oh. I'm just I'm just giving you um, something that you might have heard, Sephardic Jews or Ashkenazi Jews, okay? That just means whereabouts you're, you're from, approximately. I'm an Ashkenazi Jew because my, my family came from Europe, okay? Um, your Sephardic Jews, they come from the Middle East. That's basically it. I think we live in Spain for a while. Yeah, mm -hmm. I live in Spain. So, I mean, I don't want to get in, there's no sense in getting any more because that, it doesn't feed anything. And the Akhenazis are, are where, from where? Yeah. Ashkenazis, Europe. Europe. Mm -hmm. yeah. my, my, grand, my 
grandfather was a um, Russian Jew, right. you know, from Russia. Yes. So, and then there's some German, as near as everything else. Is there any question to anything we have done so far up to this point? No, well, this is excellent. Really, I like what you're putting together. Yeah. Did you put this together? Yeah. I, this first part, everything you, we've gone through so far, I put it together. There wasn't anything already done. I couldn't find anything. So I built it myself. You know, wow. I'm going to have to revise it for the next class, but <laughs> yeah, really great job. Yeah. but uh, yeah, I've, I've had to build that myself. So that's why there's perceptions. So. Yeah. <laughs> now, this next session we're going to go into is the, the Feast of the Lord. Now, this, I, you know, this was all put together already. So, you know, but uh, we're going to go into this because we've already gone through the fall festivals, but we need to get through the, the spring festivals. And then we're going to get into some of the other little things that are coming along. And the first one's going to be Hanukkah, but um, let me see where I go in this. I don't want to get out of it. Okay. Um, in chapter one, page three. This is the introduction to the Feast of the Lords, Lord. They are the first and foremost feast of the Lord, mandated by his word. Now, as we go through these, we're going to see that how Yeshua has already fulfilled them all, all these spring ones. And we're just waiting for the fall one for him to fulfill. But they're all mandated by his word. Uh, now, there's other feasts that we're going to, we're going to mention that are not in the Torah. Or in the Bible anywhere, but they're still celebrated. And you can celebrate, they celebrate as long as it does not violate Torah. You know, if it glorifies God, it's great. As long as it doesn't violate anything. Um, this first one here, I'm just going to mention this, then we'll go into detail farther on with these. The first is the Feast of Passover. Now for us, for believers, this feast commemorates the death of Jesus, the Lamb of God, who took away the sins of the world. He delivered us out of the sin of slavery and bondage. Right? Because when you're in the world, you are a slave to it, whether you realize it or not. It's very binding on you when you're in the, in the world and committing these sins. Now, like I said, Passover is commanded to be a meal. And the 14th day of the first month is what if, uh, God put down, although they don't celebrate it on that day anymore. With the, with the Jewish calendar. But the other calendar, which I mentioned, um, they do it on the first day, on the 14th day of the first month. But that's just going to confuse it a little more right now. And the next day, on the, the next day, is a feast of unleavened bread. Now, even during the Passover, you still use unleavened bread. And that commemorates the uh, leaving Egypt. Leaven is a biblical symbol, symbol of sin. But it's mentioned a few different times in the Gospels and of other places, but it, it, symbol, it's the, it symbols sin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, purging leaven is a symbol, symbol, is biblically symbolic of eliminating sin. For believers, 
to escape the enslavement of the world and to begin their spiritual journey to the promised land. It's also a symbol of Jesus, the bread of life, who is free from leaven, which is a symbolic of evil. So. The root that I just saw here was because they left Egypt so quickly. Mm -hmm. what, what's written here? Okay, that was because Pharaoh let us go. Let's get the Egypt out of here. That's how fast they wanted to leave. Is yeah, they wanted to get on? out of there quickly, and uh, so they, they couldn't let their bread rise. Let's go while they're going good. Yeah, yeah. that doesn't change his mind. <laughs> okay, cool. Mm -hmm. that, I always wondered that, that if, why I'll call it yeast was evil to the Jews, for lack of a better term, but. Okay, but that's but it's just it's but it's just during just during this unleavened bread for the ten days. Right. Yeah. Because I mean, any more understanding. Yeah, why it's evil, I don't know, but this says that it, they left Egypt so quickly that it was bread Just just during that. Because leaven, you put a little piece into you into your dough. And it spreads through the whole dough. A little bit of sin spreads to the whole body. Right. Okay. That's why they do leaven. I mean, when they came out of Egypt, I mean, they might have already had leaven in their bed, but they wouldn't, didn't have time to, you know, let it rise or anything like that. They just, you know, got out. But, um, Nowadays, when we uh, celebrate unleavened bread, we don't. We make sure we have nothing in our house of unleavened bread, Unle with leavening in it. Now, there, you take anything that contains yeast and you put it outside, or give it away, or give it to somebody uh, in the Orthodox. Um, let me say back myself personally during the Feast of Unleavened Bread, I will not eat anything that has leaven in it. Okay, I don't necessarily get it out of my house because that'd be wasting food, you know. So, I I, I just don't eat anything like that. Only we really the, the, the matzahs, you know. But in an Orthodox home, they will actually get rid of them, or what they will do is take everything that contains leaven, what they consider leaven, they'll put it in a cabinet, close the door in it, put tape across it, you know, all over the place. Do not open, do not open, you know. It's, you know, and then they will sell it to a goy. To the Gentile. Gentile. <laughs> The, 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 the rabbis then will sell that to, the, to a, a goy. And technically, the goy could come into their house, go into that cabinet, eat anything he wanted. Technically, although nobody ever has. So <laughs> the doorbell rang. Who is it? Another goy. Right? <laughs> Not where it is. <laughs> I'm the goy. <laughs> I mean, this is part. This is part of you know building. You know all these all these things on top of things. And then uh, I talked a few minutes ago about the Sephardic and the and, and <coughs> The Jews and things, they have certain rules, and the other group has certain rules too. For instance, beans. Now, beans don't have any leaven in them, but they will still rise. And, you know, you can't have popcorn, you can't have, you know, beans, you know, you, they, they just, you know, that's, that's how, how getting ridiculous some of this is. I mean, it's just, it's just, oh yeah. Leaven with 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 yeast in it, anything with yeast in it. Yes, I can understand that, and I don't do that. But to go beyond that, like you no know, popcorn, no you no know, beans, you know, or, or anything that will rise, you know, it's no chewing gum. But that's what they they get into all that stuff. And they said it's a uh, it's wild. Um, yeah, the purging of the leaven is symbolic of eliminating sin. 
Um, did we speak up on? These are the bread of life. Okay. Uh, the next feast on the next page, on page four, uh, the feast of first fruits. Are these feasts just right one after the other? Just about these here. Are, the, there is a few days in between some yeah. of these things. Okay. Now the first fruits is is the uh, first first day of the week following Passover. Okay. It's the first. So this falls on a Sunday. It symbolizes the feast of resurrection of Jesus. Uh, I think we talked about last time we were here exactly when he died and everything else. Okay. He had Passover on Wednesday evening. He went to the garden after that. He was arrested and all that stuff, and he died Wednesday afternoon around 3 o'clock. And then 72 hours later, he rose around 3 o'clock on the Sabbath. But because it was the Sabbath, nobody could go to the graveyard. So the first day of the week, which is first fruits, they went and they found the tomb empty. Jesus was, was born in the Feast of Tabernacles. That's another whole teaching that, um, you know, and I can, I, you know, because I can do that from Scripture too, but I'm, that's, that's, like I said, that's a whole thing to teach. That's a whole other day to teach that. But he was born, he was born on, the, on the Feast of Tabernacles. So, and we look at all these feasts that are parallel here at the specific time, we look at the big picture, which is um, saying that the springs are already fulfilled and that we are now in the fall years, which means that is kind of another one thing that I was one time Yeah, I mean, it's it has to do with everything. Yeah. So it's a micro every year that you go through all of these, and the macro, mm -hmm. we are in the fall. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep, we're doing the spring feast now, and um, and then, um, which is what Jesus already done, and we're in the period right now of getting ready for the fall feast, which uh, Jesus hasn't done yet. So. Okay. Um, then after the feast of first fruits is the feast of Pentecost, and the church calls this "Thurs," commemorates the, uh, the giving of the Holy Spirit. What did you say? What did they call it? It's Pentecost. It's yes, giving yes. the yeah. It's it's it, it's the giving of the Holy Spirit because this falls fifty days after um, the Exodus from Egypt. Because it's it's fifty days after Pentecost or Passover. Excuse me. Pentecost means something. I see the Pentecost that makes me think of five Pentateuch and all that. Is there any relation to that? Uh, the five weeks. So it was 50 days and I, you know, yeah. after, after the exodus, I didn't know. Uh, when we get into the details on these, because we're going to go through the details on each one of them. That's what we'll finish up with, that and the other ones. Mm -hmm. But um, when the Feast of Pentecost, when they were filled with the Holy Spirit, this is in the upper room. And I think I mentioned before, in the upper room, uh, when I was in Israel, we went to a place that said it was the upper room. Well, this couldn't have been the upper room. 
because other people heard it and they were on the outside and it just doesn't fit it. The upper room was in the temple. Okay, remember I mentioned that uh, Constantine sent his mother to Israel, you know, in 325, I think it was, or 340, something like that. And she picked out all these all these places. Well, the temple had been destroyed by then, so you know there wasn't a temple. But the upper room was more than likely, probably, by what scripture says in Acts, it was in the temple. Um, yeah, we call it, you know, Pentecost, but it's also called Shavuot, is the Hebrew name of it. It's, 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 it's right there for you, too. The Feast of Weeks. Because Jesus told his disciples to wait 40 days, and then to continue to wait. And it's probably another 10 days, and then it was a feast of Pentecost. Okay, we're going to stop there because then it gets into the like, fall feast, and I don't want to go there quite yet. We'll, we'll go to this first group more in detail next week. And if we can get through it, we can end it next week. I don't mind. Hey. Yeah. I don't mind. If you want to keep going, we can keep going. <laughs> it's all up to you. This is your class. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's interesting. It, 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 this whole thing builds up Christianity, what you know about Christianity, where it came from, you know, and where they went wrong and where they are right, you know. So it just brings your relationship with God that much closer because that's the ultimate of anything is how do I relate to God Himself? Yeah, you know, the Jews. They worship, they worship God the Father. Christianity, for the most part, doesn't worship the Father. They worship the Son and the Spirit. They know they have to know what the Father is. And by following the, the or the Judaism aspect of it, they get to know both. I mean, I know they're the same person, the three and one. But the, each one of them have their own individual, you know, feelings. Because even Jesus said, I don't do what I want to do. I do what the Father tells me to do. Which means the Father has a feeling that he wants and the Son has a feeling that he wants. And the Holy Spirit does too. So it's getting to know the whole thing, the whole aspect of God. Which brings you closer to him. I start off with God. But then I, a lot of times I'll say Lord God mm -hmm. because Jesus is God mm -hmm. and uh, we are three in one. And I don't have any problem mixing it either. The good thing is you're no matter what, right? Yeah. 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 Well, why nobody gets to the Father but to the Holy So it's kind of. I know. I, I did the yeah. same thing. You know, it says glory to the God, the, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I mean, I'll sometimes, even in my prayer, I did the same thing. You know, <laughs> yes, Father, you know. Do they, you know, pray for this, and you know, in the name of the Son and then the Holy Spirit, you know. However, I'm led. I just, you know, yeah, but I'll mix them up. up. It's all, it's all separation. Yeah. I don't think he wants to get hung up on. Well, it's just like the media later in organization. You got a CEO, and then you got a director or something, and then you got, you know, mm -hmm. level, so you're going through the. Mm -hmm. But in doing this, you know, too, like like you, they were getting confused about, you know, did Jesus do away with the laws? Well, no. You know, if he did away with the laws, you wouldn't satisfy, you wouldn't be to the Father, you know. But the Father put down what he wants, mm -hmm. you know. It doesn't make any difference what any of us want. It's what does God want, you know. And God, 
a guy called Sin Sin. You know? And he, only by the blood of Jesus did he wash it away, but it's still, I mean, a lie is a lie. If you lie before you get washed with a sin, you know, it's washed away. But if you lie after, it's, then it's a new sin. So we've got to constantly examine ourselves to see what's going on. But you know, with the Ten Commandments, it, it almost seems to me that it's kind of like the glory that, that, that seals clarity in terms of what's right and what's wrong, mm -hmm. whether it's a Jew or Christian. Yeah. You know? And and if we're honest with ourselves, we usually stay with Ten Commandments. They make sense. Why would we want to do these things and hurt our family ourselves. Uh, and hurt ourselves? Because once once you start sinning, it isn't just you to get hurt. Right. It's your friends, it's, it's your family, family. It's your community. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. What is like? Like a tortilla or well, that's one example. Yeah, that's a good example. I'll bring some next week. I think they're a little thicker. Yeah. Yeah. Like a flatbread. Yeah. Well, it's like it's, it's, I'll, I'll bring it next week. Yeah. 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 No, what it is, it, 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 it's, it's strictly wheat mixed with water. That's it. Now, and, and to have it to have it kosher for for Passover, from the time you mix it together, the water and and the, and, and the bread. I mean, and the the wheat, it has to be baked within seven minutes. I think it is. Wow. Seven minutes. Seven minutes to have it kosher for Passover. Okay. Got, so got, they don't do communion. They don't do yeah, well, in, in when having the Passover, <laughs> in having the Passover, the church has taken it out and, and made it uh, for communion. Mm -hmm. They've taken that out of the Passover. That's where they got it from. Mm -hmm. Because in your Passover, you're going to drink, you, you drink actually four cups of wine, juice, or whatever. You know, you don't necessarily have to drink the whole thing. You just have to take a sip. <laughs> Remember anything after that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, they're, they're, I mean, they're, they're full size cups, but you just take a sip out of, you know. <laughs> well, okay, but the Jews they drink alcohol, right? Huh? The, the Jews drink alcohol, right? Oh, yeah. But oh yeah. Only the Muslims don't drink. That's yeah. A good point. Oh yeah. In fact, when when you go to a when you go to a uh, Orthodox, you know, you drink the hard stuff too. Yeah. Oh yeah. They have hard stuff. Uh, alcohol, you know, whiskey. But um, I mean, not not for, no, not for this. Oh, oh. Oh, yeah. Not for this, but when they have when they have their Passover, I mean they have they have the regular wine. I mean it's it's regular wine. Back in you know, and some people did Jesus drink wine? You know, yes, but back then it wasn't as strong as it is now. And besides, the water was bad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's like Mexico. Don't drink the water. But yeah. here as well, yeah. don't drink the water. But the with the wine, the alcohol in the wine purified the water. So, you know, and like I said, it wasn't strong either. When I was in Navy, it was like I, 5%. I it was yeah, it's only been into Israeli wine. Well, that's still the strength of beer. That's not that. Yeah, good. it's yeah. not. That's what my point. Thank you. Yeah. When I was in the Navy, I was in Italy, and I remember seeing these little kids with, with big bottles of wine, on, you know, and they drink it all the time themselves, you know, but they don't get drunk. I mean, because it's, it's not that well, much alcohol in it. Well, it's still quantity. Yeah. But I'll bring some matzo next week and what you see. You said what I was thinking. Do you know why Muslims don't drink alcohol? Is there a reason for it? There probably is, but I don't know. I didn't, you know. Yeah, I know they don't. They must have started some. Yeah. I mean, God says in his word, don't get drunk. Yeah, but there is one holiday with the Orthodox, you know, you drink as much, you can, you know, until you can't understand anything anymore. Yeah. Yeah.
Well, one of their holidays, you know. They've never done that. <laughs> yeah. Like to think I've outgrown that. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, it, it, it gets uh, it gets crazy sometimes in some of that stuff. I have a quest. I have uh, have a friend of mine that I'm going to the other Bible study. His name is Rick Jensen. I don't know if you know who he is, but uh, he's been wanting to come to class, but he hasn't for the last two months because he's developed a, a real bad case of vertigo. And and uh, I've just been to the e ENT, and they can't find anything wrong. And he's been pregnant for a few months, but he couldn't get out of bed. He's had schooling. Uh, and so it's got to be an inner ear thing. But then they get all the tests, and there's nothing there. You think, yeah, I hope it's not something in the brain. Yeah. And so I've known it for 20 years. It's a good thing. And I just, uh, 